What is up everybody, Michael Alexander here and welcome to the first episode of Behold. Hey, welcome everybody, welcome to a new series on the channel. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while and it's this series called Behold. Now it's a little bit different from our normal behind the scenes because I really wanted to get a little bit more in depth on the behind of the behind the scenes, how we put a lot of these shoots and ideas together. So when Michael hit me up for the shoots, I was fascinated. I don't often do a black and white in camera look. So I was like, what on earth are we going to do? So when I just got the when I got the brief, I was really excited to shoot with Michael and work with Siggy as the makeup artist. I didn't know what to expect when I first got the photos that was his inspiration. I first thought, okay, maybe they'll do like the monochrome, the paint, but I wasn't sure, you know, if that's how vast we'll go. I thought we'll just do black and white and then some editing in between. When I got here, we actually really started to paint me, as you can see, nice little monochrome baby. So this one is actually kind of fun. This is this idea that we did in the shoot actually sparked from going to a photographic club meeting and them showing us a selective color prompt, you know, doing a black and white image, but one color kind of stands out. And I thought to myself, this is something that a lot of people get prompted with in photography. And I thought, how can I make this cooler? How can I make this better? How can I make this unique? And I was like, I was wrecking my brain on this for a while and it suddenly dawned on me, why not try do this in camera? It was very exciting to do this shoot because it was very different from what you normally do and to my surprise there was, there'll be no editing like black and white editing or monochrome. We are completely doing a shoot of like just the raw, the real ed editing of the image. So one of the main concerns I had with this is going to be uh, yeah, how the gray must work because the way light works on gray is a little bit different than the way light works on skin. Well, it's kind of the same, but you know, you don't perceive it the same way. So if you contour the skin with the makeup artist where you already show off highlights on the cheeks, you know, and shadows in the cheekbones, you are already creating light. And then when you start adding, you know, modifiers and stuff like that to the area, you could overpower it and get hot spots. So we really needed to focus on, you know, not overdoing the makeup and allowing the light to contour the shape because if you add light or you know bright light to gray it will turn white and if you add well shadow to gray it will turn black so that's something i really had to keep in you know, in, in my mind when i was doing the shoot when i was planning this whole thing yeah so um the main thing for me was getting the opacity of the skin right um, just so that no bare flesh shows through. So from a makeup artist perspective, um, I had to use um, a nice body paint. Um, and then I also used the airbrush and some eyeshadow to blend, um, you know, to contour and highlight um, the skin. But I had fun thinking about this one because it's not often that a client will ask you to make them look black and white without the editing. Um, it would usually be, um, you know, you get edited into black and white. And I thought that Michael had a pretty snappy idea here. Um, I had really fun. This was a lot of fun. It kind of challenged my mind. Um, it challenged my creative brain. I was like, what the hell am I going to do? Um, just to get it to look right, because do you mix it with black and white? Um, do I go gray? Um, do I go slightly more brown? Because that's also like a, monochromatic vibe. So the modifiers we ended up choosing to use are very commonly used in fashion photography. We started off using a beauty dish and a strip box. And then for some little bit of creative variation, we also played around with a snoot, a fresnel, and an optical spot. And for the lights, we primarily stuck with off-camera flash using the 8600BM and two 8200s. We also added the Stellar Reflex Pro every now and then when we needed a ball of light glowing behind the model. The only time we switched out the main flash, which was the 8600BM, is when we ended up changing it to the Stellar CLX10 for the optical spot because it's a lot easier to see where you're projecting light if the light is continuous. And another thing that I also had to keep in mind is it's never going to be completely neutrally gray when it comes out because you are experiencing a lot of color cost in you know coming from modifiers and from different light sources and it's something that definitely came about in editing process it's something i didn't really think of um, that it was going to be that big of an effect the gray wasn't fully gray but we had it 
neutrally gray, you know, visually. It is just the physics of light. So we're gonna just counter that in Photoshop. We're not gonna, you know, drag the saturation slider back and make it a full on gray. We are just gonna remove a little bit of the color cost. So the, the main thing that I had to focus on is getting the opacity of the skin bang on. Um, to not let bits of white um, or natural skin show through. And it was really fun, great model. My favorite part was putting on the lashes and the red lipstick. Um, and then obviously seeing all the lacquer poses with the black and white clothing, um, or just the black clothing, but like monochromatic vibes. I must say the feeling that I got from, from the shoot I immediately went into like a like a high fashion creative um, Vogue editorial vibe. The the poses I was doing it felt very strong, like hard um, looks. If I can if I can say it like that. Um, just after we did the, the the makeup and the painting, I had a lot of like creatures I could say I felt like. But the moment I stepped in front of the camera, I went into like you know like almost like a mafia boss or just like a strong woman figure, if I can put it like that. So another thing I had to also consider is the correct model for the photo shoot. I needed somebody who was very close to brunette, somebody that didn't have you know, a blonde hair, because we are trying to make a black and white image essentially in camera with very limited amount of Photoshop added. So I needed to find a brunette, somebody that had already you know, black hair or near to black hair. You know, it is easy to make a you know image from color to black and white, but I wanted to really limit the amount of Photoshop needed in this. So I also had to keep in mind the color of our eyes. So in a lot of the photos, we try and hide our eyes with a hat. So I thought about props. And also I wanted to pull focus to the lips, the lips being red, the one standout color, because this essentially was a selective black and white, selective color black and white. So there was a lot of things that I had to consider, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun shooting this. I'm very excited to see what these images come out of. And, um... No, I look forward for us to share them. Yeah, it was freaking awesome and I cannot wait to see the edits. Mm -hmm.